So I just got a message from my wife that said that Tesla is cutting the price of its cars. And in fact, I looked it up and it's almost a 20% cut from what I understand from the news article that I looked at. It's almost a 20% 20, 20 cut on the Model Y, which is the car we own. And I just want to talk about that today in terms of thinking of you know, what this sort of the implication is. So, you know, the, if you don't know me, I am Professor Dave Masak. I'm a, I'm a professor of strategy. Um, and what I wanted to point out is that this is really symptomatic of some, uh, it's not going to be a great year, I think, for, um, you know, macroeconomic conditions across the board. I think we're going to start seeing some really big shifts at this point in terms of the macro economy, in terms of, you know, to, um, you know, to, to meet what the actual demand is, because we're going to see demand sort of softening. But I also want to point out the importance of stability and the importance of just maintaining the same thing over again. We've seen a lot of really interesting things that have been going on with, um, you know, uh, Elon Musk, for example, in the last uh, year or two. And, you know, this ultimately has some play with how people are consuming these particular products. And what I want to point out is a really important thing is making sure that you have stability in, in, in all the actions that you actually have. And that's a really important part of business is just being boring and stable and just staying the course over time. And why is that really important? The reason is, is that it's important because that's how people make long-term investment decisions in the things that they're actually investing in, right? So you don't want to invest in something that, um, that, that you can't really predict, right? And that uncertainty is a really important part, the sort of variability of what's going to happen uh, is a really important part of consumer demand or not just consumer demand, but actually how business gets done. We look for things that seem stable. If I'm going to purchase a house, for example, and I purchase a house that is an area that um, that looks like it's, there's big swings in prices in the future, or you know that there's something unusual that's going on there, I'm going to be very nervous about purchasing that particular house, and there's going to be people that are not going to purchase. But if the prices seem fairly stable over the long run, we are more likely to purchase that particular thing. So um, what this is a symptom of, I think, is you know the sort of two underlying themes. The macro economy is not necessarily gonna be all that um, great in the future. Uh, and, but, but so there's actually one more th theme I wanna point out. Um, is that the competition is definitely tight, um, increasing within the EV space, which is amazing. I'm super happy that this is happening. And we're gonna go through a vast change in EVs and solar panels over the next 10 years. It's going to be very, very rapid. And from my perspective, I think we're, so there's this S curve that happens. From my perspective, I think we're at the bottom of the S curve where there's an in inflation where people mass, large amounts of people start adopting um, both, you know, EVs and solar pa power as we sort of transition from a carbon based economy to one that is less carbon based. Um, and I think it's pretty cool to see some of these things. We're going to see a lot of innovation that's going to happen from many different car manufacturers. And so, you know, Tesla is a leader in this space, but who knows how long that they're actually going to be a leader for, um, uh, uh, by, especially when you start seeing some of the conventional manufacturers really taking hold and going into it. But then as well, seeing some new manufacturers that are coming into the space that, you know, it's all really exciting and all is super positive for consumers, super positive for business in general. Um, and I think it's a really hot area to get into. Uh, but, you know, thinking forward, we still have a lot of progress to be made in terms of moving from carbon-based 
or combustion-based, carbon combustion-based uh, engines is going to be really exciting coming forward. So those are the three things I'm taking away at this moment. You know, the macro economy is really changing and, and 2023 is, as I believe, is going to be a little oof, a little rough. Um, and, and, and maybe not, but, but I suspect it's going to be a little rough, right? Like these things are really hard to predict and forecast and all that kind of stuff. Super hard to, to do. But the only thing I can sort of glean from this is that the macro economy is definitely changing. I do think that, um, instability, a little bit of instability that's been happening, um, may be, maybe softening the demand, um, in particular with it, with Tesla, for example, instability in the sense of, you know, leadership that's happening. Um, I don't know, but, but I think that there's possibly some of that going on. And then the third thing, I think competition is really ramping up and that's all super positive and I'm very excited about it. So looking, um, I, th I think in the long run, I am super positive about all of this because we're going to have a great deal of, um, you know, competition, variety of different products to choose from. And we're going to make a, a, a massive shift in terms of energy, um, you know, energy efficiency, right? So from my view, um, you know, EV cars are just far more energy efficient. It doesn't mean that they're, we're not going to remove carbon from our economy, but it's going to be a heck of a lot more efficient than what we have today. And so it's all super positive. Um, all right. Take care and have a wonderful day. Bye.